Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. Uh, we have been looking at uh, the spiritual warfare and we're taking one at a time. We're going through um, who our enemies are. And this particular podcast, I think I'll probably have to do with, with two, maybe two or three podcasts so that you can get a full understanding of who uh, Lucifer is, was, is, and uh, his team that is with him and how they operate and where they came from and all of those type stuff. So let's go straight in and take a look at who these guys are. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, he is recognized as the uh, Satan is called the God of this world and the Prince of the Air is called also. And we know according to Genesis chapter 36, that's when he got his... Um, his God, uh, um, as far as where he was switched over and became the God of this world, um, I was trying to say, because uh, in the original intent, Adam was the God of this world. And God had given him dominion over all things, including Lucifer, because Lucifer was here on the earth. And um, he was uh, the earth that we are living in is a new um it's, I guess it's, he kind of fixed it up because it was damaged in the original fall when Lucifer and his gang, um, Bible calls them, uh, says that a third of heavens uh, revolted. And as a result, they had this, uh, the angels had a war and Michael and uh, his boys destroyed Lucifer and his boys. They hit the planet. They uh, created the first ice age and all of that stuff. And so when the Holy Spirit showed up, God began to recreate the earth. Um, if you see the, the scriptures, talks about uh, the Holy Spirit showed up and there was ice. He shook the, the ice loose and he, as the ice begins to melt, it created the uh, rivers and so forth. So, But I wanted to give you guys a little background as to who he is um, and uh, so that we can go with that. And, you know, he was created, he and all the angels, according to the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 4 to 7. They were created before uh, the heavens and the earth were put together. We see it listed in the scripture where it says, For you and I laid the foundation of the earth. Tell me if you knew so much to determine its dimension and stretched out the surveying line. Was it poured uh, its foundation? and who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. So we see that the angels were present as God was creating and Jesus Christ actually was as God commanded and Jesus did. And Jesus created the heavens and the earth. He did all the measurements as he's laid out, um, uh, setting up his argument before Job. And so... We see that uh, uh, angels were there before. And I wanted to go back and tell you guys about all of this stuff so you will have a better understanding of what's going on and who his cohorts are. So we see that that's what happened there. So let me take to you now to his end. He, we see that he, the Bible tells us that he's created by a word. Um, in the book of Psalms, it says that God called them and spoke, uh, created them by uh, speaking and calling them into existence. And let me show you his end. So his beginning was, uh, he was created by the word that he God spoke him and he, he manifested. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That is in Revelations 20.10. So Lucifer knows his end. So he is roaming the world. It says that, um, you see that in the book of Job, when God said, hey, um, did you check out? Where have you been? He said, I've been running back and forth. And we see that actually same story in the book of Yasher, but it was concerning Abraham. God said, where have you been? And he said, I've been roaming back and forth in the earth. And he said, have you noticed my servant? And he names um, Job and he names Abraham. So I pray to God that when he comes and it's our turn, that God can brag on you and I as well. So I wanted to show you his beginning and I wanted to show you his end. 
But let me go and tell you what he looked like. He was actually one of the most beautiful uh, creatures God uh, God created. Um, uh, we see that in the book of um, Ezekiel, and um, I believe it's chapter 28 that talks about what he looked like on as God created him. And he was such a beautiful um, uh, creature. And then uh, the Bible tells us that uh, sin was found in his heart, pride, and he fell. And as a result, he became uh, corrupt and lost his beauty. And so if you want to see what he looked like, I would suggest that you take a look in, in Ezekiel chapter 28 and uh, you go from uh, verse 13 and actually 12. It goes from 12 and it'll go all the way um, to, uh, I think, 20 or 19 or something like that, if I my memory serves me right. But you can take a look at it and um, you will see what he was, uh, uh, how he looked. Let me read some of it. Let me get it. Uh, Son of man, take up a lamentation up uh, upon the king of uh, Tyrus and say unto him, Thus say the Lord God, the seal is upon uh, the sun full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. This was visible before fell. Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. There's a Eden in heaven uh, that was there. He was there. Remember, God um, brought that Eden, Eden to uh, um, earth. And after uh, Adam uh, fell, he um, protected it so that we there's a veil over there so we cannot enter in because there's a tree that God didn't want us to partake of. And that's the tree of life because it would have sealed us in the state that we are we the fallen state. So we see um, he was a beautiful thing. Thou art uh, the anointed cherub, uh, so covered with all kinds of beautiful stones and so forth. And you can read that for yourself. So that was who he was. And he is no longer that. The Bible tells us that he is a, the enemy of God. He was a part of the army of God. And now he is the enemy of God. He was f perfection, was full of wisdom, exquisite as it says in beauty, and um, all of that stuff got to his head. And um, he decided, he said, I will ascend and be like God. That was his downfall. And uh, how can you come and uh, fight your creator? And when your creator uh, spoke you into existence, boy, what, what crazy crazy thinking. Anyway, uh, let's talk about him. The Bible tells us that he is the God of this earth, and that Godship um, was given to him by Adam in Genesis chapter 3. Um, it tells us in, um, in Ephesians. Let me read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, because it tells you his, um, how his system, his kingdom is set up as far as who is working with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we know that spiritual wickedness basically is talking about um, systems that he has and laid up in the earth. And we see that all day long as we are living here on this earth. We can see that those systems that are in place and are governing the children of darkness are corrupt and they absolutely is set up to uh, break the spirit of a human being. So we know that, um, uh, as I mentioned to you, I wanted to show you his beginning and so that you will get an understanding of who he was, where he came from, and all of that type stuff. And I'm going to show you also the other beginnings of these uh, uh, parts of his kingdom. The Bible tells us, um, or we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're going to talk about those. Later, we're going to show you their beginnings, and uh, we will deal with them as we go by. So we are seeing right now that uh, Lucifer is the leader of this gang, and um, he is pretty, he hates us all. He hates human beings. He hates mankind because um, it was uh, the mankind was God's pinnacle. Because remember, he said, "I want to be just like God," and God creates this creature and 
made him the god of the earth. So, of course, he was jealous and upset. And so he just did what he had to do. He um, he came through the woman. He's just an opportunist. Came through the woman. And uh, through the woman, he was able to um, deceive her. But he, he didn't, did not deceive Adam. Adam went in willingly. And that's what um, Adam created through his disobedience. He created this new creature that the spirit of mankind was corrupt and sin entered in and so forth. That is why the scripture tells you and I that we must be born again. Why? Because that spirit of, of uh, that was corrupt, we have to, that has to be born again. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 26 to 28, it talks about, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from you flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I uh, give to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. We know that um, uh, God uh, had to give us a new spirit and we see that also in, in, in uh, Colossians. Says we uh, actually Second Corinthians says we be, we become a new creature, and um, so that's what that is all about. So as we begin to focus on this uh, entity that is Satan and Lucifer, the enemy of God, the Bible tells us that this guy is defeated. Number one, we know that he's been defeated by Jesus Christ. Uh, Adam uh, through disobedience failed. Jesus Christ through obedience won. And we saw that when he was tested in the wilderness, and then he walked all the way through to death, paying the price for every um, every aspect of the human condition. Jesus Christ paid that price for the Bible tells us that cursed uh, is anyone who hangs on, on the tree. And we know that Jesus Christ had died to sin so that you and I will not have to die to sin. So let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14, for as much then, as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death. That is the devil. So he has a, he was um, had the power of death. He is destroyed. So we see that he has actually no power when it comes to uh, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ gave us those things. So I want let's go and take a look at First John th chapter three eight. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy works of the devil. So we know that His works are destroyed. We know that um, His end. He knows His end. Uh, we knew His beginning, and um, we know that He hates mankind. He hates people. And um, we will take a couple of look, a couple of scriptures, and see. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And you remember the imagery that we had, um, sorry, when, you know, most of you guys are in church, but uh, him coming before God and um, uh, accusing Job. So he goes around like a lion. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the lion of Judah. This guy is a fake, and you'll see it all the time. It, um, he can't do nothing, he can't create anything, just a fake. Um, so we see that he is going around as a lion. We know that he is our adversary, the devil, the Bible tells us that. So we know that he is, um, we have an adversarial relationship with him because we are now children of God. We have been plucked out of his kingdom. Sure, that's got him really, really upset. But the Bible tells us that you and I can win over him. Ephesians 4.28 says, We give place to the devil. It says that we can resist him and he will flee. So neither give place to the devil. So that is a choice that we can give place to him or not. Um, it tells us in uh, James 4.7, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we see that he's not as bad as you think. Because if you can resist him, then you have power um, over him. We're in the sense that he is not able to conquer you because you have the ability to resist him in the spirit. And Jesus did it. Jesus came and showed us how to do it. He says, not uh, my will, but by uh, the word of God. He said, 
they shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that uh, proceeded out of the mouth of God. So um, we have a blueprint by which we can uh, kick his butt, in other words. So we know that um, he's out there. He's, a, he's our adversary. We know that we have authority over him. We know that we can resist him. We know that we can um, uh, not give place to him. And that means in any aspect of our, of our, our life, he enters in the thought. We're going to talk about the battlefield later, and that's how he gets in. And if you entertain the thought, you will lose that battle. Every time he comes, come straight with him with the word of God. And I guarantee you, you'll see how he runs from you. So the Bible tells us that we be not to be ignorant of him and all of his de devices. He has ways by which he comes to you and I, but it tells us that we should not be ignorant of it. Second Corinthians 2.11 least Satan should get an advantage of us. We are not ignorant of his devices. So uh, we'll take a look at some of his devices that he utilized to um, entice you and I on the next episode. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith, and you and I are commanded to walk by faith, not by sight.